Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Cardio Etc. Today I'm showing you how to wire up steering wheel controls with Pioneer single din and double din head units that have a built in steering wheel decoder. <laughs> So I should say just before this video starts, um, to do this you do need to be confident with the soldering iron, you have to do this with a solder, you can't use any other type of connector, they're just not good enough, and I'll explain the reason for that later. And the other thing is this is only with Pioneer stereos of the 700 series and up, and what that means is, uh, see all these ones here we got are pretty much in the 900 series, so if you've got a Pioneer DEH a 2750, 2850 or 2950, this will work. If it's the 2650 or earlier, they didn't have a built in at that stage, so unfortunately this won't work for you. But if the second number in your model number of your stereo is seven or higher, this should work for you, I'm pretty sure. I know that it works for the, the, uh, the 2850, the MVH, 385 and 395, the 48, the 47, 50, uh, the DH 47, 50, 48, 50, and 49, 50, and the DH 67, 50, and 68, 50, the ones we got here. Now, also something I should, should say is that your results may vary with the single din head units because unlike Pioneer's flagship model, the Pioneer AVH X8850, this stereo this stereo here has built-in learning functions for Japanese and Korean cars which means you can actually go into the settings and set whatever button you press to any function on here whereas with the single din head units it doesn't allow you to, rem to manually program each function to what button it does so you may get a button doing something that it isn't supposed to or you may not get it to work at all unfortunately that's just the limitations of these single din radios versus that double din one which can be programmed and learned to pretty much any steering wheel control so the way these things work is they work off a resistance and that's why you have to use solder you can't twist and tie you can't use a chocolate block or any type of connector you're going to want to use solder because it's the best possible connection for conductivity and security so if you used a chocolate block or a connector of some sort that might alter the resistance on that wire and then it may not work for the stereo so that's why you need to be able to solder for this so the stereo i'm going to be demonstrating this with is the pioneer mvh x395 bt and i'm in a 2007 suzuki swift so this so this trick works pretty much with most japanese vehicles sorry it's not going to work with any european ones you may get lucky with a couple of holdens or fords but i doubt it but so this is a very specific video targeted at people who have japanese cars with pioneer stereos and the reason i'm showing this is because not a lot of people know this but to get your steering wheel controls working with these these pioneers actually have a built-in uh, resistive steering wheel control decoder in them so you don't have to buy that separate module to do that for you so you can see here I've got I've got my volume working. The mute button works. Mode, skipping through the sources there. And the seek button on this one is good because it's got dual functions. So if I push it once, it goes through the presets, and if I hold it, it seeks. So that works really well. And I can prove to you that this is working without a module by just simply taking this out. You can see see that wire on the right hand side there which is slightly falling out that is my steering wheel control wire hardwired straight to the wires of the car so now that you guys know what this video is going to be about I'll get down into how I actually do this or how you guys can do it for yourselves so step one is figuring out what wires you need to uh, look what have the steering wheel controls on them now you can do this a few ways you can either if you really know what you're doing use a multimeter to test resistance levels on the wires as you're pushing the buttons that's the really complicated way if you know how to do that then that's great the other way to do it is just to use something online to tell you whether uh, what wires do what basically i have on my iphone here a um a little pdf which actually has a lot of the japanese car plugs and wiring diagrams preloaded into it so you can see like 
I just go across to here to Suzuki. Suzuki there, 20 pin, and it tells me, there's the shape of the plug, and it tells me that the gr reference ground is in that corner there, and steering wheel control wire one is there. There's no two, so I only need to hook up one. And there you go, it actually says input one is number one, input two is not connected, and ground is G. So that's one way you can do that. Um, where I got this PDF, Grant who works with me linked it to me. I honestly can't remember where he got it, I'm sorry. But I know he got it off the Sony website. So you could look around there if you wanted. But the other way um, you could do this, I just have that there for quick reference. But the other way I used to do it that you guys can do is you just go onto your, web, on, onto your computer and you go to a website called Access interfaces.com and these guys do serial controls so what you do is you go to the access interfaces.com ve slash vehicle dash fit dash guide not sure if my GoPro is picking that up but access with two X's interfaces.com slash vehicle dash fit dash guide and then you've got this little instructional thing here so first thing you do is you select the year of your car so this is a 2007 make with Suzuki there it is sorry if the GoPro is not picking this up but it should do Suzuki Swift get parts and then the first thing that it lists is the ASWC1 instructions for the 2007 Suzuki Swift and the ASWC1 is the steering wheel control interface so if you click on this little link here it'll bring up a PDF now these instructions are normally meant for you to use with their steering wheel interface but I have used them to in the past just to figure out what wires do what in the car and then translate that over to using it with my stereo. So it's gonna, so you can ignore like the first two things in the instructions because that's the black wire and the red wire which are the power wires for the interface, you can ignore those. Number three, it'll say connect the grey blue wire to ASW, of the ASWC one to pin 19 of the vehicle. So don't really worry about what colour wire it's mentioning there, just worry about this part here. Pin number 19 of the vehicle. And then it's got a little diagram down here and it will tell you what wires you're looking at. And it says here this wire view of the radio connector, this is the wire view of the radio connector in the vehicle. So what that means is that we're looking from the back side of the plug where the wires are. So you've, we know we're using pin number 19 which is down here and then the next one it says connect pin 20 of the vehicle harness to ground. So that's there right next to 19. So we know we're using numbers 19 and 20 which if you imagine this is looking at the where the wires are, the wires would be where my hands are so it's going to be in the bottom left corner. So let's go and check that that is correct in the vehicle. So let me just quickly take this out. Okay. So we've got the plug here. We look at it from the wire side, so from the back. And we remember it was in the bottom left corner. So now we know that it is these two wires here at the back in the bottom left corner. We know the corner one was ground and the next one in was the signal. So as you can see, black, yellow. I've got that hooked to the ground wire of this little steering wheel control loom and that brown one there which is the next one in, number 19, is going to input number 1 of this little plug and input number 2 just doesn't get used. So now, so that's how we wire it up to the car, so that's we know those are the two wires. So what to use to connect it from the car to the stereo? If you are in the industry, I highly recommend you find a supplier who has these little thingies here. Which So these are a 3.5mm stereo jack. It's a lot like a headphone cable. It's the exact same as a headphone jack. And they have nice labelled things coming out of them which say input 1, 2, uh, input 1, input 2 and remote ground. Now you can use a cut up auxiliary cable or headphone cable. Although I highly wouldn't recommend it because the wires in these are much thinner than the wires in these, which means this is get this the wires in these are going to have a greater resistance on them, and that could affect your ability to get the uh, steering wheel controls working on the stereo. So if you can, 
I would recommend finding something like this. Either that or going to an electronics store and buying just a three and a half millimeter stereo jack which you can solder your own wires onto. If you do that, you need to know what pins do what. Okay, so if you're using just a, a headphone or aux cable or something, or you're making your own one, so you know what pins do what, the very furthest out one at the very tip, that's input number one. The middle one is input number two. And then the one closest to the butt or the plastic of the connector, that's the ground. And what's really handy about Pioneer stereos is when this plugs into it, that connection there does get grounded, which means you can hook the reference ground wire on this plug, which normally has to go to the chassis, straight onto the ground wire of this, and it will get its ground from the stereo, which is what I've done here. So as you can see, I've got input two left hanging because I'm not using it. The black wire here, which as you can see, here's another one. It says, the black wire says steering wheel remote ground. So I've hooked the black wire to the reference ground in this plug and then input one, which is the uh, green wire, to signal number one on this plug after we'd figured out what wires were what. So now that it's all wired up, how you get it like, you know, programmed in and working, I'll show you. Okay, so I've got the head unit plugged in, aerial, main harness and steering wheel control wire that obviously goes into the three and a half millimeter jack socket on the back of your stereo make sure that it does say uh, w slash r or rem beside it that means wired remote sometimes it will have a purple ring around it but not on these pioneer ones so we can sit this back in here just gently for now and now on pioneer stereos the way you get to do this you click the main button menu and then you go into system so you rotate it go into system rotate all the way until you see oops there it is s remote click and then it will be on off to begin with you rotate that don't click pioneer you click preset and then it's got a whole bunch of cars in here so we've got daihatsu honda hyundai mazda mitsubishi nissan one nissan two because there are a couple of different you know uh types out there subaru one subaru two Subaru 3 and then you've got Suzuki and Toyota and back to Daihatsu so obviously we're in a Suzuki so we're going to click Suzuki it will tell you to press volume plus for one second so we'll do that and now it's telling me to push volume down for one second if everything works correct it will say completed and then you can just push back to get out of there turn on a source like the radio and then you test there we go we can see the volumes working up and down the mute button works mode button skips through our sources seek button pushing it up and down takes you through the presets and holding it seeks up and down and holding the mode button because the stereo, you can see the source button here, if you hold it, it goes to off. So holding the mode button turns it, will turn it on and off. What each stereo can do with um, push versus hold functions will be different across every model. It really depends on how they've set the operating system of the stereo up. For instance, there's actually an Alpine model out there where I installed steering wheel controls where if you hold the volume down button, it actually mutes it. So that's something you know, slightly different out there. Not all stereos will respond the same, but you should be able to at least get your volume up and down, uh, your source or mode button. And if your stereo doesn't do dual function, it will either do seeking up and down or preset up and down. If you're lucky like this one, it will do both. And that's pretty much how you do it. That's it from start to finish. It's quite a simple process, once, as long as you know what you're doing. Like I say, you know, you can check out that website, it will tell you how to wire up <clears throat> excuse me their steering wheel control interfaces all I've done is I've used their website with the information about what wires in the car are used to translate that over to connecting it onto this Pioneer system and as I say you need to use solder because it is it has zero resistance on the connection and ideally something like this where it has these pre-labeled pre-wired wires coming out of it 
Now, if you do all that and it says completed and everything works, but you find that some of the buttons aren't doing what they say they do, for instance, if seek up and down is controlling volume, or what can quite often happen, particularly in Mazdas, I should mention, seeking up and down sometimes have a resistance level so similar that you can only program it to do one function, i.e. seek up will seek it up, and seek down will also seek it up. And that's unfortunately just, that's just the car, there really, there is nothing you can do about that. Um, it, it, the problem is the resistance levels on those controls are so similar to one another that the stereo and even some aftermarket interfaces can't tell the difference between them because they're so close. And that's just as good as it gets, unfortunately. But with a lot of cars, like, you know, all the other brands of Japanese car, it's generally okay. So as I was saying, if you discover it's doing something that it's not supposed to on these buttons, but it is working, you're welcome to go through those settings and try it with other makes of car. I have done that plenty of times in the past. Um, I've tried using the Subaru settings on a Toyota, the Toyota settings on a Nissan, etc, etc. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you find that all the other settings are saying error or try again and it's not working, then unfortunately you will have to go back to the one that you did have that was working and just remember that this button does that and this button does that. That is, that it, it sounds very limited but that you have to bear in mind that you are saving yourself quite a bit of money by doing this compared to the price of an aftermarket interface which can sometimes set you back 250 to 300 bucks. So yes it is limited because it is you know a very basic one that they've pre-built into the stereo but it's really good if you've got a Japanese car because it makes the process really easy and cheap. And this is actually why I recommend to people who have Japanese cars getting a Pioneer over an Alpine at this stage because at this stage Alpine stereos don't have one of these built in. I'm sure they'll do it sometime soon in the future. Um, there is a couple of Alpine stereos out there that do, I shouldn't say all Alpine. For instance the Alpine CDW296 EBT does have it built in and so does the IVE uh, W560A. Those are the only two Alpine stereos I know of that have a built in steering wheel control decoder. But Pioneer are great because pretty much all of their stereos have it built in. Do check before you buy though. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful in some way. If you have any questions about the process, please drop me a comment, I'm happy to answer them. I hope I explained that in as much detail and clarity as I possibly could and explained and you know covered any possible uh, things that could happen. If you have any questions, as I say, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and if you like car audio, do subscribe to my channel because I put out heaps more videos coming soon. Thank you for watching, choose to be happy and I'll catch you in the next video. Kaki Tano.